So you may have heard the term agent-based modeling. Together maybe sometimes with other terms like cellular automata, artificial intelligence, some kind of learning like deep learning or enforcement learning or even game theory or evolutionary approach. So today we are going to discuss agent-based modeling, why it's interesting, why it is powerful and how it relates to all these other fields. So to understand agent-based modeling, let's start with a really sad joke from mathematical modeling. So in mathematical modeling we count like this, one, two, infinite. That's it, that's the joke. So why is this terrible joke interesting for us? Because actually in mathematical modeling we really have a similar approach. When we model something we try to identify some kind of atomic structure, something that is like the basis of everything, like an atom. And usually we study it either by itself, like how it behaves in solitude, or maybe with another one, so we have two entities, or we directly jump to infinite entities, like a material made of infinite atoms. And we do this because usually in physics it makes sense. Like in a bottle of water you have something like an Avogadro number of water molecules which is huge, is 10 to the power 23. So yeah, it's not infinite, but that's pretty similar to infinite. Anyway, it's a good approximation. But now think about another type of phenomena, like birds flocking. If you have only one bird, you don't observe flocking. If you have two birds, still you don't observe anything which looks like flocking. And if you have infinite birds, Still, you observe just a mess of birds doing something. So to observe some kind of phenomena, you need a certain number of entities, which is fairly big, maybe even sometimes less than 100, but let's say it's fairly big, but it's not as big to be considered infinite. So what do we do when we have a situation like this? We use simulations. We try to simulate a scenario in which we have many different particles and actually computers are great for this but they're not infinite there are a certain number like 100 1000 something which the computer can handle and this is our first point agent-based models which i didn't explain yet but i'm coming in a second are pretty much agent-based simulations so whenever you find the two terms, they are pretty much the same thing. Yes, modeling is more related to just having some equations while simulations are in the computer. But at the end, when you make agent-based modeling, you always have to deal with the model using simulations. So then what is agent-based modeling? It's a type of model which uses as its atomic structure an agent. And an agent is something that has agency. You're welcome. So to really understand what an agent is, is some way the abstraction of either people or animals. And this is because when we use agent-based modeling, we're interested in group of animals or people. So the fact that an agent has agency means that the agent can choose something, even if most of the times the choice is really stupid because it is determined by some kind of rule which can range from something super complex, like from artificial intelligence, to something really basic, like if your friend raises his hand, then you also raise your hand. And this brings us to the three main subfields, disciplines, I don't know how to define them. But anyway, as we mentioned before, we have cellular automata, artificial intelligence, and we have something that we can call classic agent-based modeling because as we will see agent-based modeling some way takes all three of them together so let's start with the simplest which is cellular automata in cellular automata you have some agents but usually are so simple that are called cells and also they are not even allowed to move around but they're fixed in a grid and usually they have two states pretty much sometimes it's a little more complex but most of the time they have just an alive state and a dead state. You can think of them in terms of pixels on our screen. They can be on or they can be off. And also the rules or cellular automata tend to be really, really simple with rules, for example, like if you have three pixels close to you that are turned on, 
then also you should be turned on but if all the pixels close to you are on then you should be turned off or any sort of rule with this structure and yes i know it looks super boring it doesn't look interesting at all so why people should study something like this the answer is because sometimes they can create super fancy pattern and the amazing thing is that you use really simple almost stupid rules and you can have the emergence of really weird complex patterns out of this stupid rules so how is this possible and the answer for now is we don't know because actually people studying cellular automata are trying to figure out what is generating complexity what is the source of complexity and so they try to study the simple rules and how they can spark more complex behavior but then you have some people that say something like yes all of this with cellular automata is amazing and i really hope you find something uh, really interesting about complexity but i'm not too interested in general complexity i'm more interested in complexity in some specific scenario for example in society how can it be that a bunch of people at a certain point become countries at war how is that possible so if your question looks more like this you're more interested in the other two fields which we said it's classic agent-based modeling or artificial intelligence plus agent-based modeling. In classical agent-based modeling, people are trying to represent the agents with fairly simple rules. Also in this case, they can range quite a lot, but the rules are always clear. An interesting and simple example, which I link to this video, is a video game from Nikki Case in which you have several characters, each one with a different behavior. So some characters tend to cheat, some other characters tend to help other, some other characters Characters tend to just copy the behavior of other players and then you see which one is performing the best which one tend to win more and this type of questions are more related to agent-based modeling or classic agent-based modeling because actually we have some really distinct behavior and we can link that behavior from an outcome like this behavior make this character win finally last but not least is using artificial intelligence or i think most of the times is reinforcement learning so in this case you have agents and they learn by interacting with other agents so just to be clear here we're not looking at something like an agent learns to walk by themselves because in that case you just have the agent which is walking and is learning by making mistakes in this case you have something way more interesting at least to me is more interesting sorry because you have adversarial behavior so you have some agents which are trying to achieve one goal and some other agents that maybe are trying to achieve the opposite goal a really good example is a video also i'm going to link this in the description below which is where agents learn to play hide and seek so you have some agents which are trying to hide some agents that are trying to catch the other agents and you can see that as one group of agents learn one technique then the other group group has to learn something new to overcome that specific technique so to wrap things up we have this agent-based modeling which is a series of different approaches that are trying to understand to model and simulate how a group of people or maybe animal can develop some characteristics or maybe how some patterns can emerge anyway the key point here is the interaction there should be some kind of interaction between agents and this interaction is what makes everything special so i know i mentioned also game theory and the evolutionary approach at the beginning i didn't really explain their connection even if i mentioned them even if they were hidden in some examples so sorry but if you are interested in any of these consider subscribing and looking at next videos i have one video every week sometimes even twice per week and we discuss mostly about social complexity so definitely we are going to explore more of this so thank you very much for listening and see you next time